another uh, acceleration due to gravity example here. A rock is thrown up just over the edge of a cliff 10 meters high with an initial upward velocity of 4.5 meters per second. Determine the maximum height, time of flight, and impact velocity of the rock if it lands at the bottom of the cliff. So here's the cliff. Here is uh, you. We're going to throw the rock. It's going to come down and land at the bottom of the cliff. It's 10 meters high, and the initial speed here is going to be 4.5 meters per second. So, like the last example, the um, maximum height here is going to be fairly easy to find. So, we're going to start there. Max height. We have an initial velocity of 4.5 meters per second. We have a acceleration due to gravity of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the third piece of information that we have at the max height, remember if this object's going to turn around, it has to stop as it's turning around. Can't get going down if it's going up if it doesn't at least stop for a second. And what we're interested in here is the maximum height with a delta d. See the equation? 2a delta d is equal to v2 squared minus v1 squared. Substituting my values, oh, I'm getting lazy with equations, or with units one more time. 8 meters per second squared meters per second all squared 2 times negative 9.8 is negative 19.6 meters per second squared and I got 4.5 squared calculator for 20.25 meters squared per second squared. Divide both sides by negative 19.6. Negative vertical displacement. of 1.03 meters. Now, on a test or a quiz or something like that, the question might say, determine the maximum height from the top of the cliff, from the bottom of the cliff. So you need to read carefully and make sure that whatever, however you state this as a final answer is in agreement with that. So if it was from the top of the cliff, then your 1.03 meters is fine. But if it says from the bottom of the cliff, then don't forget to add in the 10 meters that, of the cliff. Because what we really found right here is this displacement right here. Okay. Let's do impact velocity next. I can't use V2 equals zero for impact velocity because I'm going to go up and come back down. When I used V2 as zero, that meant that I stopped there. I'm coming all the way down to here, so it's just not true anymore. So I can't use that. A equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I can obviously still use an initial velocity of 4.5 meters per second. So I need, I got two, I need one more thing. So if I come over here and I look, the red part of this motion if I consider it from a displacement point of view, it cancels itself out. It goes up and it comes back down. It's not important. But the green part of this motion is sort of like the net change in position. So my delta D here is going to be negative 10. 10 because it's down, and, or negative because it's down, and obviously it's 10 meters there. So my third piece of information here is that my displacement is negative 10 meters. Impact velocity means I'm looking for V2. 
and that means my equation. is 2a delta d equals b2 squared minus b1 squared. So 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times my delta d of negative 10 meters equals b2 squared minus b1 minus Four point five meters per second squared. This all works out to one hundred ninety six meters squared per second squared. And this works out to oh, I just got that number over here twenty point two five. Uh, just as a quick note, and one more time, I'll stop saying it. This negative does not get squared away, so don't lose that negative. And be careful here, again, as we square root, that plus or minus, um, that plus or minus gets introduced. Because we don't know, again, remember, a square root says what times itself gave us this value. And we don't know if that original number could have been a plus or a minus. So we have to be really careful with that. Uh, in this particular case, because the object went up and came back down, it's falling as it comes back down. So I'm interested in the negative root. So v2 is equal to negative 14.7 meters per second or 14.7 meters per second down. All right, time of fun. Time of flight means the entire time from when it leaves here all the way up and all the way back down. So again, I can't, I'm looking for information that uh, pertains to that point right there. So I can use the same set of information that I used for my impact velocity. It means my acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My V1 is 4.5 meters per second. That's been true for every question. But here my delta D, my change in position from when the rock was thrown to when it lands, is 10 meters down. Here I'm interested in my time. What we're going to see as we go to use this formula is that uh, an annoying consequence of this formula is that we're going to end up with an a quadratic equation. And in physics, where we're frequently going to have decimal places, it's probably not worth trying to factor at any point uh, to solve these equations. We're just going to use the quadratic formula. So I've substituted all the values. I'll do the division by 2 here. Beyond that, I'm not doing much. And um, I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side to solve this. See, I have a t, a t squared, and a linear term, so I can't, or a um, constant term, I mean. And so I can't solve it directly. I have to use some sort of method like factoring in the quadratic equation or something like that. So when we are using the quadratic equation, we always have to have everything on one side. And remember the formula here is that t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. This is a, this is b, don't forget that negative, so I can, I can just view that as plus or minus that. And this is c, and again, don't forget the negative on c when you're doing it. So negative, negative 4.5 meters per 
second. That bracket should be back there. Plus or minus the square root of 4.5 meters per second squared minus 4 times 4.9 meters per second squared minus 10 meters. It's a little annoying to carry your units around in doing a calculation like this. But if we remember, they have to work out. And I think it um, can be motivating in that we can think of it as a check uh, to make sure that you haven't done anything that you shouldn't have done or that you haven't accidentally put a term in the wrong place or something like that. So having substituted everything, two negatives make a positive on that 4.5 meters per second, plus or minus. Now I'm just going to punch everything in that bracket into my calculator. Careful, notice that it's a negative 4 and a negative 10, so those two negatives are going to come together to make it a positive. And when you do your square root, you're going to get 14.7 meters per second. See, it was meters squared per second squared, meters squared per second squared. And so when you add them and then square root, you're going to get meters per second. The bottom we have 9.8 meters per second squared. And then I can write out my two roots separately. Okay, 14.7 plus 4.5 divided by, well, oh, try it again. 4.5 plus 14.7 divided by 9.8 equals 1.96. Careful here, if you just type this into your calculator and you're not thinking, if you type 4.5 plus 14.7 divided by 9.8, and you don't use brackets, it might just divide the 14.7 by 9.8, not divide the 4.5. That'll give you a wrong answer. That's, so that's just something to check if you typed it in and it came out wrong. Okay, so we get two roots here. We're interested in the positive root because we want to know how, how long after this happened. But what's interesting in this is a good reminder about uh, the fact that we're using models to represent what's happening here is that this rock goes up and comes back down and sometime if we imagine that this happens in time sometime later specifically 1.96 seconds it's going to hit the ground but the model doesn't know that the negative values aren't equally uh, valid so if the acceleration was constant we trace this parabola back what we would see is that it would cross the uh, the x-axis at one other spot, specifically negative 1.04 seconds. So that's why we get a created secondary root. This is important to discuss because you have to remember that you're using a model. You're using equations that are based on the idea of constant acceleration. The equations are going to predict the results as if that constant acceleration goes on from negative infinite time to positive infinite time. And it's up to you when you're using your model to remember that and to remember to make reasonable choices about whether or not what the model is saying is going to happen is valid or whether it's, uh, whether it's wrong. So here, I mean, this is sort of an obvious one that the t is 1.06 and not 1.04 because 1.04 is in the past and we're not interested in the past. We know that it doesn't extend back there. But it's just something to be aware of because, um, because it is, you do have to look at, um, you do have to look at the model you're using whenever you're trying to predict what's happening based on the mathematics.